Okay, everybody, I'm just going live on um, Facebook. So if you'll give me one minute just to get live and then we'll get going. Just to get live and then we'll get going. All righty, we are live on Facebook. Bonga, hello. So happy to see you. You look as handsome as ever. Okay, everybody. So let me record quickly. Welcome, welcome to everybody. So nice to see some familiar faces. Thank you for having your camera on, Bonga. It's so nice to have you with us. Um, I've had the privilege of working with Bonga for, for quite some time now, and I haven't seen him in a while, and I'm very excited to see him. Um, so thank you for joining us. Um, Bonga Francisco's on, so you can say hello to him in the chat box if you want. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, everybody. So whilst we're waiting for a few more people to log on, because you know how it goes, some people log on a little bit late. How about we all go into the chat box and you can say where you're from and perhaps uh, an opening word for today's session. How are you feeling about today's session? So let's go, everybody, into the chat box. Let's get um, the conversation going a little bit. Okay, Bridget, I see that you're in. That's awesome. Okay, so Bridget says she's intrigued. Ooh, la, la. Okay, sounds good. Okay, who else has something to say? Let's hear from some more of you. Anna from the Spa Consultants in South Africa and the UK says, loves the topic, it's so relevant, correct? Shani says, since it's Thanksgiving here in the USA tomorrow, I'm grateful. Oh, happy Thanksgiving for tomorrow from all of us. I'm sure there'll be lots of delicious food on your table tomorrow. Okay, some more of you. Come, everybody. Bunga, excited to be here from Relax Spas in Cape Town. Nice. Okay, some more. Francisco, how did I know you were going to love that word? He loves the drama queen word. Of course he does. Okie doke, some more, some more, some more. Give us some more opening words, everyone. I want to know that you're here. Always here for the drama. <laughs> I'm glad. Okay, let's hear some more. Let's hear some more. Red carpet for all the drama lovers. That's fantastic, Francisco. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, so while the rest of you are typing away there, remember you're putting what's your word for today, how are you feeling about today's session, um, and your name and where you're from. That will be great. I'm going to share my screen so long. Karen says she doesn't do drama llamas. Okay, so give me a thumbs up, everyone, or just say yes, you can see my screen. Are you able to see my screen? Yes. Awesome. Okay. Joy, so happy to have you here, my darling from Botswana, who's just in the process of moving and revamping her spa, which is so exciting. Karen from KwaZulu Natal in South Africa. Lovely to have you here. And Karen doesn't do drama llamas. Yeah. But today, are you a drama queen magnet or are you a talent magnet Danae says she's having some troubles load shedding okay so before I carry on can you please go into the chat box and let me know if you are if you think that you're a drama queen magnet or a talent magnet 
let me know. And please, there's no right or wrong answers. So I sort of know what your answers should be by the mere fact that you're attending today's session. But let's hear. Okay, prefer talent magnets. Okay, Karen says she's a talent magnet. Okay. Talent, is anybody drama queen magnets? Honorary drama queen, real talent magnet. <laughs> That's a good one. Okay. I can't even see that. Love you, love you lots, guys. I'll see you soon. Love you, love you. Who's love you, love you? Laniel, is that you? We love you too. Mute. I think it might have been Karen. That's hilarious. Miranda says, used to get the good ones, need I say more? <laughs> okay. All righty, let's get cracking and into the meat of today's session. Okay. So my promise to you today is that by the end of the session, you will go from feeling frustrated, overwhelmed, and unsure to confident, prepared, and determined when it comes to hiring talent. You're going to learn seven steps when hiring talent. And then I'm going to share, and I cannot go into it too much today, but I'm going to give you a little taste about why work ethic needs to be a part of your recruitment process. Okay, so, and we're gonna chat a little bit about that later on. There is going to be a bonus for those of you who stay right to the end, okay? And that bonus is two templates, a hiring checklist template and a work ethic questionnaire. And these are two templates that will be gifted to you only for those who stay to the end that are going to save you hours and hours and hours of work. So now you all know the deal. No distractions. Please put your phones into the sleeping bag. Can you please put them to sleep? And can I please have um, a note in the chat box to say free from distractions or deal that you're going to be focused over the next 35 minutes, absolutely no distractions. Can I please have an agreement on that? Because otherwise, we really are wasting each other's time, right? Okay, I love the deal. Hello, Cora and Lee, hello. Okie dokes. Now, before we carry on, making sure that you're in the right place and that you're listening to the right content to help you in your business today. One is if you're having challenges hiring the right staff. Two, you keep hiring drama queens. You constantly have to babysit some members of your team. Or you're in the right place if you want to be a pure talent magnet. Okay, are you all in the right place? Can we carry on? Is everybody feel like they're in the right place? Because this is some of their reality. Doesn't mean all four points, but it means some of them are your reality. Yes or no? Are you in the right place? Let me hear from you in the chat box, please. Okay, Bridget says yes. <laughs> Cara raised her hand. <laughs> Okie dokes, good. Okay, we're getting lots of yeses. Okay, so before I carry on, why do I feel that I am the perfect coach to help you in this particular department? Well, I feel that I am the perfect coach because this is one of probably hundreds of testimonials that we have regarding how the information and the systems, the tools that we share have changed people's businesses, have changed how they view their staff. In fact, some of you um, would have seen that lovely comment from Janelle yesterday in our community group about how when we first started working together, she really did have staff 
challenges, really, really had staff challenges. And all the tools and the guidelines and the systems that we gave her to put in place really helped her to A, attract the right kind of talent, but also very importantly, B, is to give the right people the right tasks and not over expect from who she had in which department in her business. Okay. All right, I want you to take two seconds to imagine something with me. And I want you then, as we're imagining, I'd like you to go into the chat box and write a word to describe how you feel while we're imagining all of this. So number one is imagine you had a proactive and productive staff 100% of the time. How would that make you feel? Imagine you had plenty of CVs of the best talent that was available, that you didn't have to go and hunt for them. How would that make you feel? Imagine you had more time to spend on what's needed in your business rather than fixing staff nonsense. Okay? How would that make you feel? Remember, I want a word in the chat box. I want to know how you feel about all this imagining that we're doing. And imagine that you didn't have any staff issues at all. Almost unimaginable, right? Okay, so Bridget says she'd feel a bit more relaxed. How would the rest of you feel with imagining if your businesses were structured or set up like this? Linnell says she would feel calm, relieved, motivated. Sounds amazing. Could breathe. Interesting words that are coming. More time, less stress. At ease and confident that the business can run without me. Okay. Brilliant. Alrighty. Okay. So we're going to dive into the meat today. Francisco says, I will feel that I can focus on so many other aspects of the business that need the attention and also on the beach. Okay, that's quite interesting. We like that. You could spend more time on the beach. Good. Danae says stress-free and Washima says relaxed. So I'm going to give you quite a bit of, of information and tips today. So you can either watch the recording again, you can take screenshots, um, however you like. But the first piece of advice and tip that I'm going to give you is hire slow and fire fast. Okay, really, I was told this about three years ago, and I never had that attitude. For me, I, I, I got to a place of desperation that I need staff. I have to find them now. So I would hire because I had to hire, and I'd overlook certain things, and that person would land up leaving, or I would land up having to fire them anyway. So rather take your time and hire slow and fire fast. And here are some more tips. Let go of the desperation. So no matter how desperate you are for staff, don't behave like you are desperate. Number two, change your mindset. And this is so true and so important. Stop saying to yourself and to everybody else, there are no good staff out there. Because it's not true. Yes, there might be few great skilled. There might not be a massive pool of talent, but there is talent out there. So change your mindset. Say, right, the talent is few, but I'm going to find that talent. And then the last one is follow the hiring checklist. What that means is, and that's one of the things we're going to give you today at the end of the session, don't skip one little point on that checklist. So just yesterday, we had a meeting, and I myself with a client that we deal with, and she said to us about a staffing issue that she was having, and yes, she, she did, she was warned on the reference check that she did about this particular person. And she herself was going through this exact same thing that she was warned about. 
on the reference call, which we're going to discuss in a minute. Now, what happened there was, is in desperation, you hire somebody because they are 90% of what you want. But that one little comment or that one reference call that said, listen, be careful of this, you overlook it because everything else is so amazing. Well, you know what? That one little thing is going to come back to bite you in the bum. So you follow the checklist and you do not deviate from that checklist. And yes, I'm going to tell you, it is going to take time. So there, there can be absolutely no desperation here because that is the first way that you're going to attract drama queens is through desperation. Because most of the time, drama queens in themselves are desperate. Okay. Next one. So how are we going to do this and what are we going to learn today? There's seven steps that I'm going to take you through. These seven steps are not A to Z, okay? Because A to Z is very comprehensive. And I'll show you when I'm done, everything that we cover when it comes to, we call it human resources, but it really is recruitment and how to retain those staff once you find the talent. But I'm going to give you seven of the main pointers on how to start attracting talent and changing what, whatever talent it is that you've been attracting so far. So number one, we're gonna talk about the search party. Number two, the brief. Number three, the CV. Number four, the interview preparation. Very interesting step. Number five, the first interview. Number six, the trade test. And number seven, the reference checks. Okay. When you look at these seven pointers in front of you, please go into the chat box and let me know. Are there any of these points, before we even go into what they mean, that you can already look at that you are possibly not doing in your recruitment process right now? Does anybody see anything in front of them of these seven points that they are not particularly doing, even though you might not know exactly what it is that we're going to discuss in that point. Let me know if there's any of those steps. Bridget says number four, the interview preparation. Okay, I thought so. Anybody else? Karen, the trade test. Ooh la la. Okay. Kara, step four, four. I'm expecting most of you to have step four. Okay, so we're gonna go, I'm gonna go through all of them with you. And then I look forward to hearing at the end of the session, what it is that you took from today that you're going to change going forward when making sure that you're attracting talent. Okay, so step one, we called it the search party. So. I want you to view looking for staff as if you're setting out on a search party mission. You've lost something. And what happens when you lose something? What do you do when you lose something or someone? Let's get a little bit more. Let's dig a bit more deeper here. When you lose someone, what do you do? Do you just phone one person? Do you just look in one place? What do you do? Share with me what you do. Aha, right. Use every resource. Look frantically everywhere. Look all over the place. Okay, so now... This is quite interesting to me because everybody that I've spoken to when it comes to staff have all said, oh, I've tried here, but that doesn't really work. And I tried this one recruiter and then I'll say, well, how many have you tried? No, only one. Or I tried to put an advert on, on Facebook. So really what you need to do is you need to send out a search party. And I've given you a few ideas of where to search here, but this doesn't cover everything. You really need to get your staff involved as well, okay? 
uh, sit and think about when you last remember the subject. Yeah, LinkedIn and all over. So you're going to go onto Facebook, groups in your area. You, you're going to go and search there. LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, recruiters. Now, very importantly with recruiters, they, they really are fantastic because they, they cut the workload down and they can sift through a lot of the, the initial work for you. But for me, you should be dealing with at least three or four recruiters. It's again, it's broadening that search party that you're doing. And then reputable schools in your area. I definitely think that they are worth the giving them, you know, extending your search party to include them as well. Okay. So that's number one is how broad. So there's the question for you. How broad is your search for staff? So you need to ask yourself that question quite carefully and take some time to say, okay, am I really looking everywhere or am I narrowing my search down? Okay. Cara also says large skincare brands. Yes, that's also an alternative. So you've just got to really put the word out everywhere. Okay. Next, number two is the brief. So I have some questions to ask and you can say to me yes or no and maybe say one, two, three or four. Have you ever received a lot of CVs that were not the right candidate? So you, what's typical of this is a Facebook post or an ad on Facebook about we are hiring and you get flooded with hundreds of CVs that you have to go through and probably 90 of them do not are not even the right fit for the position that you've advertised. Anybody had that before? Have you ever interviewed a candidate only to see that they look nothing like the picture on their CV or their profile for that matter? Have you interviewed a candidate that was absolutely perfect for the position? Everything about them was amazing but they lived so far away and you only figured this out at point Z. Have you ever had candidates send in a CV that are not even qualified for the specific position that you are advertising? So for example, you're advertising for tech and you get a massage therapist sending in her CV. Okay, so everybody is saying yes, 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 and yes, and yes. Now, do you know why all of this has happened? Do you know why you have got all these CVs that were not the right candidate? Or you have interviewed a candidate that didn't look like their, their picture? Anybody have any idea why? Yes, you hit the nail on the head. So I'm going to go back to this. This was not according to the brief. It means that your brief or your specifications that you gave for that candidate were not narrowed down enough. So for those of you who have done your marketing module, where we discuss your customer avatar, your ideal customer, so this is pretty much the same thing. You're going to describe in a lot of detail who is your ideal candidate for that position? So yes, you do have to be careful what words you use and what how specific you get, but you can word things in very specific ways that start narrowing and narrowing and narrowing down so that you get more of the type of candidate that you need than getting flooded with CVs. Okay, step three is the CV itself. Okay, a few tips about the CV. Okay, number one, and there's quite a lot. I'm just covering a few today. How far from the business do they live? I'm sure a lot of you are going to agree with the comment I'm about to make. When people are looking for a job, they become pretty desperate. And their first point of call is, no, it doesn't matter if I live an hour away, I'm willing to travel. They are willing to travel for the first three months. 
And thereafter, you're going to get, well, I had this issue and this transport issue and I couldn't get here on time or I got locked in my garage or it eventually becomes a problem. So eliminate that from the word go. Is there work experience in the skill you are looking for? Now, this is very important. So let's say you're looking for a front desk coordinator. If her work experience has been a therapist, a skincare therapist or a nail technician for the last five years, does she have experience in the skill that you're looking for? No, absolutely not. So yes, she might be in our industry, but she doesn't have experience in telephonic skills, in working on a computer system, all that, that set of skills that you're looking for to fill that particular position. This is really important. And I feel that a lot of times owners and managers set up staff for failure because they put them in a position where their experience or their skill set hasn't necessarily been built up in that specific area that they want to position them in. Number three, have they listed references with numbers to call? And this is quite important. So um, all their job references with numbers, often I find they'll only put two references. And those are the ones that obviously they had the best relationships with. And when we get to the reference checks, I'm going to give you a few tips there. But you really want to see somebody who's very wide open with their reference, their references and phone all of their previous employers. And then, quite importantly as well, is have they presented, now this is quite an interesting one, in their CV, do they present you with any client testimonials or before and after pictures of their work? Isn't this a good one? Okay, if they haven't, this is part of your preparation, you want to see some client testimonials, you want to see what do clients have to say about their skill. And also has this particular therapist taken the time to build up that testimonial portfolio for herself? And then very important tip that I haven't put on here, but it's an assumed tip, right? You need to ask and make sure that you have a recent within one month or three months photograph of the person that appears on the CV. And you do have the right to ask that. Okay, is this a recent, or in your brief, you will say, send a CV with your most recent within three months photograph of yourself. Okay, does this make sense, everyone? Next comes the exciting part for me, interview preparation. So really, to set up both yourself and your candidate for not wasting time. Because often, 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 I speak to salon owners that will say, well, that was a waste of my time. Really, uh, that was 40 minutes that I could have used elsewhere in my business. You would have saved yourself those 40 minutes had you both been prepared for what might have or might have not turned into an interview. So here we go. I'm going to give you some preparation tips that need to be done before you meet with the candidates. Okay, so all of this that you see in front of you has to be done before you meet with a candidate for the first time. Number one, Personality profiles completed and submitted. Now you're going to decide which personality profiles you want. So in your um, in your study, in your, oh my goodness me, the word's not coming out. In your student profiles, you have all the personality assessments available to you. If you're interviewing a therapist, I think it is sufficient enough to do the one, two, three personality test and the DISC profile. Whereas if you're going into a management level, I highly suggest that you start broadening out and looking at Enneagram, and there's a few others there that you can use. But you need these profiles before you've even met with a candidate. Number two, oh, I'm so excited about this one. Work ethic questionnaire. Anybody 
have any idea what this might be and why this is absolute key to becoming a talent magnet. Anna, you're not allowed to answer. She heard my training yesterday about this. So does anybody have any idea what a work ethic questionnaire is? <laughs> let's hear, let's hear. Someone who is committed to the position. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sort of. Any other ideas what I might be talking about? So I'm not going to go shows their integrity. Okay. Hardworking and passionate. Okay. So I'm not going to go into huge detail. I'm going to show you a little chart, but one of the gifts that you're getting is a work ethic questionnaire. But if you, if you research, and we're adding this into our HR module, if you, read, if you research work ethic as a subject, there is hundreds of reasons why work ethic needs to be part of the recruitment process. And how do you understand work ethic is not in an interview situation because you're, they are going to tell you exactly what you want to hear. It's by sending them a questionnaire and asking them to fill it in as if it's part of the personality assessment. And you will very quickly understand that person's work ethic based on the answers that they give you to, to the questions. But that is critical for you to understand and to try and dig in deeper to see, okay, yes, this person is skilled. Yes, they can do this and this and this and this. But if their work ethic is not great, they're not going to fit in with you. Okay, then the third one. How many of you have phoned the candidate the day before to confirm the interview for the next day? And the reason for the phone call is not to confirm the appointments or the interview. It's to hear how they speak over the phone because that's going to tell you how they speak to your clients over the phone. How many of you have done this? Because this is quite interesting. I have lots of owners and managers say, no, I've never done that. And actually, I should have because I've now figured out that this person doesn't speak very well over the phone and, you know, is a bit of a problem. Okay, so this is vitally important. It's a simple phone call. Hi, this is Marisa. How are you doing? I'm so looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Do you know where to go? Hear what they say. And the time, can you confirm the time? Yes, okay, amazing. Just get into a tiny little discussion with them. See how they answer their phone, see how they say goodbye. Little things that you'll pick up from that telephone call. And then last but not least, part of your interview preparation is check all social media activity on your candidate before they arrive okay so how many of you have how many of you already do this and how many of you have never done this or how many of you have done it after you've hired somebody because now you've figured out or oh, oh, drama queen and then you go onto social media and you find all the validation of your of your drama queen comments that you've made so really this is also in your checklist that we've given you. You have to go and dig a little bit deeper and check the social media activity of the candidate that you're looking at hiring. So looking at how they present themselves professionally as well as on a social level, because they are human beings after all. So you just want to try and gauge a little bit more about the personality of the, of the candidate. Okay. So this I just wanted to show you is a little bit of the 10 workplace ethics. So it's work ethic that we cover in the questionnaire. But it's just, again, we'll go deeper into it, into our HR module. But it's, it's different to what questions you ask in an interview situation. So it's more about 
um, the, the, what does the person do in their spare time? You know, if, if there's not a client booked, what would they do? Um, it's trying to find out a little bit about how they work as a team, uh, how important they view time management. And so we've given you a whole lot of questions that are going to dig a little bit deeper into your candidate's work ethic. Okay. All right. Step five, the first interview. So here comes the tips for the first interview. Number one is the first impression really does matter. There is no bad hair day excuses for first time interviews. I'm sorry, but I, I find this quite fascinating when somebody will arrive to an interview with no makeup and say, oh, I'm so sorry, um, you know, that I'm not appropriately dressed or or made up because I slept at a friend. Sorry. Okay, the first impression that you get on that person is really does matter. So please take note of that. How did you feel when you first met them? What, what word did you have to describe when you met that person for the first time? Was it wow? Was it whoa, amazing? Now, those are the kind of words, because remember, how you feel is how your clients are going to feel. Number two, be prepared. Have all the documents you need at hand. Please, if you haven't, and I'm going to go back to the slide, if you haven't done or have in hand all of these documents that you need here, don't have that first interview because you, you might be wasting an hour of your time. And time, as we all know, is our most precious resource. So save yourself a lot of heartache by being prepared for that interview. Have every single bit of documentation that you need. Number three is don't waffle. Don't sit there telling them your life story about how you started this business. Just get down to, to what needs to be spoken about, okay? And last but not least, we have a template on first interviews. Follow that template. Don't, don't get sidetracked by nonsense. Have your documents ready and follow the template on your on your first interview questions. And that's going to give you a great understanding of whether you even move to the next step or it's call it a day, it's game over here. Okay, step six, trade tests. Can I have an indication of who performs or who makes sure that their candidates perform a trade test on them? No matter who the candidate is, whether they have come the most highly recommended or not. Okay, we do always, great, Bridget, brilliant, yes, always. Okay, I'm very happy to hear that. So always perform a trade test, whether the recruiter has done a trade test on your behalf or not, number one. Number two, which is another one that I'm not sure you are all doing, because most of the times, people will do a trade test on a massage. I'm not sure why, but they want to, I don't know if that's how you feel, you get a, a feeling for their hands and their pressure and whatever, but I like to do two different types of treatments in a trade test and they shorten them. So a trade test shouldn't take longer than an hour. You do a 20 minute back massage and a 30 minute facial and you cut the facial down to you want to feel how they massage and how they handle the head and, and that kind of thing. Or if you are interviewing more on the body side or on hands and feet, you would do a back massage and just a simple nail paint so that you can see how do they paint nails at which speed, et cetera, et cetera. But always do treatments and not one with a trait test. Okay. The next point, number three, appearance at that trade test matters. How do they arrive for the trade test? Do they arrive looking like the part of what a therapist would look like who performs that treatment on you? And that's what you want them to look like, okay? Not like they're going to a fancy dress party. And the last one, and please, don't ask them to do this. You need to see, do they volunteer this? Is do they perform a thorough consultation on you prior to doing the treatment? 
Because if they don't, it means that that's not how they are wired as a therapist. They just come and say, like, lie on the bed, let me do the massage. And they don't do a consultation. Well, chances are they're not going to do it on your clients either. Okay. All righty. Make sense to you, everyone? Yes? No? Give me a thumbs up. Some feedback. Okay. Number seven, reference checks. Okay. You must phone the references yourself. Not your PA, not your manager, you as the owner of your business needs to phone those reference checks. And again, it's irrelevant if the recruiter says, and they do do the reference checks, okay? But whether they've done it or not, please phone the references yourself. Secondly, make sure that you're speaking to the right person. Very often, when you get the reference section in the CV, they will put a manager that they've worked for or another therapist or somebody. Make sure that you're speaking to the right person. So if they're part of a group, you're going to ask for HR. Otherwise, you're going to ask for the owner. You have to dig deep and ensure that before you do this reference call, you are speaking to the right person person that can give you the right information. Then you must do a social media reference check. It's part of the references that you're getting on this person. You're looking up, you're, you're digging a little bit deeper into their personality, into their lifestyle habits, which you are very entitled to do. And then ask the magic question. And that is, would you re-employ Marisa, if she had to come back to you for a job? That's, that's probably the most important question that you can ask. And you'll see, they'll hesitate or they'll go, oh my word, definitely yes. Or it depends if she moved closer. Or you'll always get some like real good meaty answers from that magic question. Okay, makes sense to everyone. Okay, so would you like me, best question ever, magic for sure, Karen says, so would you like me to help you with everything to do with your staff, whether you have existing teams or you're setting up new teams in just eight weeks? How does that sound to you? Let me get an indication from whoever's on this call. Would you like that kind of help? Let's hear, let's hear. <laughs> Cara, yes, please. Okay, so I'm going to show you a little bit more of what you can expect when it comes to the type of content that we're providing when it comes to all things staff, not just in the recruitment process, okay? So you really have two options when it comes to, to this, is you can do it yourself, definitely. You can Google a YouTube, um, phone other spa managers in the industry, and you can try and test, which would take you hours, weeks, months, years of time, or, you could use the 100% proven framework and step-by-step -step roadmap that we have drawn up for you, okay? And how we know that it's 100% proven is because of the testimonials that we have that have said that this, the systems that we put in place simply work, okay? So as it sits at the moment, uh, a little above this, it's 90 members from 19 different countries, at Spa Professionals Guild. And I want to show you the two modules that cover everything to do with staff and just very quickly take you through what we cover. So seven steps to a dynamic team, staff huddles, staff meetings that everyone wants to attend because often your staff don't want to attend meetings, how to set correct and appropriate targets, the opening and closing checklists for your therapists, 
personality profiling, and not only personality profiling of each individual, but a team summary of what does your team look like? Is everybody a similar personality? That could be why there's conflict. Or have you got the right personalities in the right positions? Effective communication, the famous praise sandwich, that is Linneal's favorite tool, four square questioning technique, delegation, managing conflicts and complaints, the importance of planning your daily revenue, my most powerful tool that gets results instantly, revenue results instantly, the therapist five point growth plan, the value of your hour and mindset 101. And then in our HR, this is our brand new module that we have. You've got the staff hiring checklist, first interview questions, trade test, and a working interview, reference checks, personality profiling summary sheet, therapist treatment matrix, job descriptions, induction plans, the importance of one-on-one -on -one meetups, performance reviews, KPIs, and exit interviews. So there really is a lot of meat and a lot of tools and a lot of templates and resources that would take you hours and hours of, of time to put together. Okay, right. So everybody who has stayed on until now, you simply need to send an email to info at sparprofessionalsguild.com and request the two templates that we are, that we are gifting you. So the staff hiring checklist and the work ethic questionnaire. So you can call it um, subject, you can call it um, talent magnet template gifts. Send that email off and we will gift you with those two templates that you can get to using absolutely immediately. Okay, are there any questions? Any questions? And I'd also like to hear from you. What was your takeaway from today? What did you discover today that possibly you're not doing? And that is why maybe you're not attracting the right type of talent. I'm going to put the email address in the chat box. Okay, Lorato. There we go. Okay, so please let me hear everybody. Uh, my takeaway is that the basics are not outdated and still apply to today's generation, correct? Okay, that's awesome. Good, good, good. Anybody else have anything that stood out as new to them today, as something that you're not doing, that you definitely are going to change when it comes to the recruitment process? Interview process needs more work, okay? I'm so glad I'm hiring slow. It was for a reason, so I could watch this and learn what I'm not doing. I didn't think of personality testing. Love that the therapist should have their before and after photos, definitely. Okay, what about the work ethic questionnaire? I don't see anybody seeming to be like, wow, on that. Because for me, what what really impressed me the most about researching this whole topic is this di diving deep into somebody's work ethic, which is not something that I used to do or would do as part of a recruitment process. I, I really wouldn't. So it is quite interesting what comes out of digging a little bit deeper into figuring out somebody's work ethic. Can't wait to see it. Good, Cara, I'm happy. Okay, awesome, everyone. That sounds amazing. Would you suggest do first interviews, then come back? Yes. So, Miranda, in exactly the order that I did it in the presentation. Okay, so you, you, you've got to do all your interview preparation first. Sometimes... By the way, everyone, sometimes when you do your interview prep, you will decide not to actually go forward to the interview process. 
because you might get back this person's personality profile and see this person just does not fit in my business. You might uh, dig a little bit deeper into their, their social media and figure out that this person is definitely not somebody you want on your team. So that interview prep is vital. Then you do the first interview, then you do the trade test because you might then meet the person and decide you're not going to trade test. Um, you're not moving forward to trade test. Bonga, I'm doing interviews tomorrow. Thank you for our opening info. Absolute pleasure, Bonga. I hope that you can put this all to amazing good use. And yes, give me some feedback on how it goes. And Everybody, I want to leave you with, with one last thought, which is we really, all of us, including me, need to take a mind shift when it comes to staff and when it comes to the talent out there. We need to rework our mindsets and we need to change our dialogue because all I hear all day is there's no good staff out there. There's no good staff out there. And you know what? We're making that our reality. That's what we're turning our industry into. We need to say, right, there is good staff. There's, there's few of them, and I'm going to find them. And then all of us together need to upskill our staff because the more everybody does that, the better the pool of talent is going to be out there. Okay. And I really hope that that makes sense for everyone. And that if everybody works together to change that mindset, well, that is what then is going to become our reality. Okay. Super, everyone. So we finished beautifully on time today. I'm so excited. Thank you, everyone. Um, it would be nice to hear from everybody what was your best take. Otherwise, thank you all for attending. It was amazing to see you all. I hope you have the most incredible season with Tons and tons of revenue. And we'll chat soon.